Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and as I promised on the live stream, I have officially made the I don't care, kill it because you're gonna die one way or another deck. It's uh, black white, it's afterlife, and it's death triggers, it's ETB triggers, it's kinda the traditional black white ping away, you know, one life for blinking, breathing, or doing anything. And uh, it, it's been working. I mean, I've been kind of hovering in high uh, uh, platinum with it, trying to get to diamond, but I'm not sure it's quite that good. It looks like it has maybe a 65-70% win rate, though, so, you know, if you play it long enough. Uh, mostly, if you're just looking for something that can compete with the broken, you know, tier 1 crap that Wizards refuses to do anything about in Standard, this will do it. This will get you your dailies, um, if it doesn't involve colors other than white or black. Uh, so, basically, it, it took... Uh, at least a week of playtesting to get the numbers right for the ratio of like afterlife to triggers to late game threats to um, early game death touches and all that. I'm still not sure I have it right. And you might've noticed it's 61 cards. So it is what it is. I just really don't want to drop vampire, but that would be the one I would drop. So just whatever. I mean, build this however you want. You might even want to put in bone splinters or that improved version of the bone splinters um, from Ikoria that I took it out just trying to get it down. It was 64. But, like, being able to kill something at will and get the triggers on purpose can be, like, you can turn a, a kill spell into, oh, a kill spell and three damage because of the death and then the ETB triggers. So, you'll see what I mean. So, we got Fallmire Knight. I mean, this is a death touch 1-1 one, one for 1, optionally. Or you can pay 3 and, uh, at instant speed, draw a card and lose a life. So, I mean, yeah, this is a, a generally downward trend in this uh, deck. It, it isn't, like, white heavy, life gain heavy. Let's put it into Johnny's Pride Maid and a... Uh, that two cost guy with the ETB and all that. It was in the deck in the early form, but I thought, well, it, it's nice, but it just kind of stalls and doesn't win the game. And with all the late game value and late game threats right now in standard, it, it just, I had to cut it. So uh, then we got the Vampire of the Dire Moon. Um, Death Touch Lifelink. Okay. I mean, classic. Just love it. Absolutely love it. You cast this, they think twice about swinging with their stupid 4 3 or whatever. Uh, then we got Orzov Enforcer. This one's huge. I mean, yeah, it's twice as much as a 1 1 Death Toucher, but. I mean, Value Town, first of all, 1-2 for the purposes of Trample, that's cool. And then Death Touch, and then Afterlife 1. So they gotta kill it twice, you get the ETB on the Death Trigger, the ETB potentially on the Death Trigger of the Spirit later, and potentially the ETB Trigger of the ETB. I think I just called the Death Trigger an ETB Trigger, but we're gonna move past that. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So then we got Corpse Knight. I like this. This is kind of cool. So whatever another creature, uh, token or otherwise, be careful. Not every card says that. Uh, enters battlefield under your control. Each opponent loses one life, but you don't gain one life, but it's a two, two for two and it's damage. It, it's going the correct way. Their life total going down. That's what I consider to be the correct way. I didn't have to cut it to two though, because this deck was all like, oh, you know, lose a life to do this. I'll oh, lose a life to cast murderous. And then eventually you're just too dangerously low and you lose. So two it is. Now Cruel Celebrant, that's a different story. So when this card or another creature or Planeswalker, there was originally one in here, uh, you control dies. Each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Way more value for two mana, but you have to wait until it dies. But the whole theme of this deck, logically, is it's either going to stay in play and keep hitting you, or you're going to like trade with it and it'll die, and it'll probably honestly come back, that's the point, um, and then you're going to take damage anyway when it dies. Um... In either way, you're going to take damage. So you're either going to take damage when it hits you, or you're going to take damage when, when you block it and it dies. And then, like I said, it's probably coming back. This is such a you-can't-win card, and it's like the, the whole point of the deck was Cruel Celebrant, basically. So, of course, I'm going to run four. So then we've got Ministrant of Obligations. I just like that it's, you know, one creature that turns into two. I mean, it, it just goes. I mean, I had to cut it to three because, it's, you know, it's a little high on the cost. You can tell there's almost no bottom in this deck. Um... But, I mean, come on, it's so many triggers. It's so many triggers. And the best thing is when you, you get the afterlife trigger and then resurrect Ministrant immediately anyway, which is what this deck does. It's so funny. So broken. Uh, then we got Bastion of Remembrance. Now, this isn't a creature, but I consider it a creature spell because when it enters the battlefield, you create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. So no no lifelink, no nothing, but it's just something to, you know, chump block and die later. And then immediately you get the guaranteed effect of whenever a creature you control dies, token otherwise, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life that's the magic word if i could put in four i could but i can't 
Um, so absolutely love that. I mean, it's just too good. It, it sets it up with a, a crappy little one, one, and then you get benefits from it dying right off the bat all in one. And it's too generic. I mean, that's just amazing. Then we got midnight reaper. I mean, the, the card advantage was a problem in draw heavy decks. Not a lot of people playing Simic draw anymore. And that's like, that's like draw your whole damn deck. I, I've seen people draw literally like the rest of their deck minus three just for safety with hydroid. Cause they have like a hundred mana. Yeah, you're, if it's a draw deck, you're not going to outdraw it. But against a normal deck, you do want to keep just throwing anything, absolutely anything, into the battlefield. <laughs> and uh, this is how you do it. Uh, it does only one damage to you and you get a card out of it, so okay. But I did limit it to two because if you start drawing too many of these and you get like two in play and then, oh, well, I got a board wipe or, oh, they board wipe me or, oh, I had to block four times so I don't die... Ooh, you could get a lot of damage because it's per death, including itself, and then per Midnight Reaper. I mean, that, that could start going into double digits. Then we got Murderous Rider. I mean, come on. It kills a Planeswalker. Yeah, it's two life, but whatever. And then it's lifelink to make up for it. So I'm going lifelink. It's a target. They might even feel the need to remove it because it'll be one of your more important creatures, believe it or not, in the deck. Then we got Plague Crafter. I almost want to come back to him. Because the top of the deck explains why this guy's here. So when he enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker of their choice. And if they can't, they discard a card. So that, that's hilarious. So those stall and hold and do nothing creatureless decks, well, one less card. Cool. Um, then we get Lurus. I mean, he's not the companion because if you think I'm going to build this deck with, with all two or less, you're crazy. That's why I thought companion doesn't look that good. I mean, look at that restriction. But one, a couple of the cards are showing it to be very broken, very doable. And two, uh, other formats? <laughs> Oh, I mean, there's only ever about 2,000 cards tops in standard, but if you expand it to like 10,000 cards in like modern or 27,000 cards-ish in uh, the eternal formats, it, it might as well just say build whatever you want. You, you got so many cards to choose from, there basically is no restriction. Totally, totally, totally broken. They, they need to ban all the companions from basically every other format. A lot of people are saying that. Um, so this is cool because it's like, it's a lifelink three, two. Okay. It's got the optional, you know, mana flips on the hybrid there. I like that. And, uh, uh, during each of your turns, you may cast exactly one permanent spell. So it includes, well, I mean, it's two mana or less, so it would include Bastion, but that costs three. Uh, but it's two mana or less from your graveyard. So that's, I mean, this, 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 and this. It was a little bottom heavier. I had some more death touchers, but then the deck was just weak. I need to get to the top. Um, and then because of that, this deck's like literally 39% mana. Um, but still, I mean, this is important. This is important. And these, uh, this right here has uh, afterlife. So it's like, well, okay. And if you add them up, it is four, 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 two, one. I mean, it, it, it's a fair number. So by the time you get them out, if he had to just be a lifelinker, okay. Otherwise, if you start recasting stuff at one per turn, you're almost guaranteed to win the game. I mean, you'll just be throwing out so much more death touchers. Like, oh my God, another death toucher. And they're going to swing with an 8-8 eight, eight and lose it, you know. Um, but I did only put in one because like it, it doesn't really fit the deck that well, but it's just so hilariously perfect for the deck I had to throw one in. So then we got the strangely not legendary Luminous Broodmoth, a.k.a. Mothra Supersonic Queen. <laughs> so um, it's a flying 3-4, so that's damage in the air. That's cool. It's a blocker in the air. That's more important. And uh, flying, of course, so whenever a creature you control uh, without flying dies, including tokens, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it. I thought this didn't work with tokens. I mean, it does say return turn it but it doesn't have to go to the graveyard first tokens are considered to go to the graveyard i just haven't been paying attention while, while this deck is playing okay but um yeah they they gotta kill everything twice almost every damn thing in this this deck is on the ground so plague crafter let's go back to that you drop it into play you select itself unless you really need the afterlife triggers and then this guy could literally just kill somebody um <laughs> like if you have an etb trigger and a death trigger I mean, there's like three damage right there. It It's hilarious. But um, yeah, it, you choose him and then, oh, was, was he flying? Guys, I, I don't think he was flying. Boom, drop him back in immediately. Now he's flying. Choose him again. <laughs> and remember, this is sacrifice. This gets around hexproof. This gets around indestructible. And if they run out of creatures, they just get, start tossing cards out of their hand. I mean, it's just too funny. It's It's amazing. Oh, I love it. And, uh, spoiler alert, it works with Nightmare Shepherd, too. <laughs> oh, 
this deck so evil? So yeah, I like Luminous Broodmoth. I mean, the funny thing is, because of how the rules work, Minister of Obligation dies, you get the two spirits, and then Minister of Obligation drops right back into play with a flying token. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, it's just terrible. It's just this deck should be illegal. Um, not power-wise, just because it's it's just so hilariously synergistic, and I'm kind of being hyperbolic and sarcastic, but anyway, drag to the underworld, if it's a two-cost kill spell, come on. Destroy target creature, cool. It did need some point removal. If you want to throw in Mortify, go for it, it's almost the same damn thing. Um, instant speed, you know, whatever, cool. Um, getting rid of enchantments actually is important. I might flip this for Mortify, but, uh, mana is hard to come by. Two versus, like, three actually is a thing, like that, you're gonna notice. Uh, but this is double black mortify is a one each plus one. So, you know, but then we got nightmare shepherd, which is also not legendary. Neither is the moth. What the hell were they thinking? <laughs> I guess the moth stacks with itself. Cool. But if they destroy one, then you've already got one in play. Like that's my issue with it. Nightmare shepherd is just messed up. Okay. So this is another flying resurrector. I feel like they, they got a little too close with these cards. Um, and notice I'm running three, three because it's just too four heavy. It's too, it's too high heavy on this, uh, thing. It does cap at four. I will say that, but you need to get to four. In fact, you kind of need to get to five man on turn five to start, start splitting two, three spells. So, um, yeah, whenever a, another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. Uh, if you do create a token, that's a copy of that creature, except it's a one, one, and it's a nightmare in addition to its other type. So still ETB, um, it's an exact copy. I believe it's considered a token, but most of this deck doesn't care. So, I mean, once again, Ministrant of Obligation dies, you get your two flyers, and you drop it right back into play as a 1-1. One, one. And then they kill it again, you get two more flyers. And you get the ETB trigger on all these, and you get the death trigger on all these eventually. It, Oh, this deck. I love it. Um, I think this, uh, this archetype is usually called Aristocrats, but uh, I think think that that name sort of implies a little bit of a graveyard loop which this uh it's quicker than a graveyard loop but this this isn't your typical aristocrats build like it's from the history of magic the last like five ten years it's kind of the same thing but it's a little different a little bit more effective is what i want to say so yeah this is this is pretty tasty the whole nightmare thing never comes up i'm not doing tribal i mean there's no downside to this plus four damage in the air for four ain't no joke so if you get one of these in play and one of these, they can resurrect each other, which is beyond hilarious. Um, I've, I've just dropped a board wipe on top of one or two of these and just, hi, I'm back. It might as well be an asymmetric board wipe. I mean, it's truly, truly ridiculous. So Kai's Wrath is the last one. I did have one, then I went to two, then I went to three because these are so like, I'm going to come back first and I don't mean with card advantage. I mean, my shit's coming right back into play directly. So yeah, destroy all creatures and then you gain life equal to the number of creatures you controlled, <laughs> token or otherwise, that were destroyed this way. Oh, <laughs> I mean... I just drop a bunch of crap back into play. I get all the death triggers. I get all the ETB triggers because I can choose uh, what order they come back and play, except on Arena. That's nice. There's a setting you can turn on to do it manually, but it's a pain in the ass. But it, yeah, love that. But I, I don't need it. I win enough damn games with this. So th this is this is nuts. Uh, I, I really like this. So then uh, we got a buttload of lands. Uh, we have 24 lands out of 61 cards, which I believe is like 39%. Because you need about 40% of your deck to be lands. You need to open the game with three, preferably. And if you open with two, you want above a one in three chance of getting a land in the next total three draws if you go second. Um, and if you go first, okay, you kind of buy yourself a turn anyway. It kind of evens out. But you want to be above the curve on pulling that third one. Because, I mean, if you get stuck at two, like, these are your options. Yeah, it's not bad. You're going to keep chump blocking forever until you can... Uh, you know, get something better, but the power starts at three and then the, the, the bomb spells start at four. So this gets going quick, but I mean, I wouldn't say you wouldn't benefit from like seven mana because we get castle Ardenvale where you pay four and generate a human and get an ETB and a death trigger for it. And then uh, castle Octoing where you just start getting cards, card advantage, card advantage is very, very, very important in this deck because permanent advantage is important for the purposes of, you know, dying and ETB, triggers which is like the whole deck in case you haven't caught on so like i said that creates tokens this creates cards 
Um, another one that drains away your life total. I mean, I think they did a very good job designing black cards that give you card advantage, um, doing a ton of damage to you as like a downside because it, it comes up, it, it, it gets cumulative. Trust me. Uh, so then we got, you know, planes and swamp cool, but then, uh, I mean, look how much mixed and, and exact and just, yeah, you need colors. So we got four godless shrines, one guild gate. That's right. I resorted to a guild gate. Honestly, I should get rid of one more swamp and go with that. Um, I was going to put in fabled passage, but there's not a lot of planes and swamps anyway. And, uh, I wasn't a hundred percent sure that I wanted to stop drawing lands late game because remember it thins it out two to one. So we do have scoured barons. Hey, game one life. Love it. Love these lands. Glad they're coming back. Um, then we got a uh, temple of silence. So, uh, you know, scry, that's nice. I mean, it's slow, but at least you get a scry out of it. You don't want to pull, you know, too many of the fours when it's too early, that kind of stuff. This is almost like cycling kind of, you get to at least you know, fix your hand by one or fix your library by one, however you want to consider it. So let's jump to the gameplay. These examples are going to blow your mind. All right. So, okay. Opening hand. I mean, we got two, two costs. We got midnight, which is great, you know, to get them cards going, play crafter, probably the most powerful, uh, individual combo in the deck besides just death triggers and board wipe. And then, you know, removal with life gain. I mean, there you go. Got the third land on the first drop. Love it. Of course, I'm not going first, by the way. I never do. Uh, so this deck just doesn't do enough. He's like, oh, I kept it because look at that. Late game, I'm going to absolutely win. Well, this doesn't look like a blitz deck, but you might have noticed the CMC average. It ain't high. I mean, it goes one, two, three, four, and four are the win cards. So uh, Graph Digger's Cage hilariously does nothing, nothing to stop a single card in this entire deck. That's hilarious. I guess Luris. Okay, it stops one card. It doesn't stop the demon, and it doesn't stop the moth. That's hilarious. <laughs> so I get why he's mainboarding it, but... Eh, so this is some kind of is it spell spam crap. And you can tell, I mean, yeah, it's 17 to 18. That's a big threat. I could take it out whenever the hell I want, but... Now I've got a blocker in the air, cool, and now it's 18 to 12. I've got a little bit of lifelink going on there. That's why the guy's there, pretty nice. But uh, he's he's getting up there. I mean, he's running out of cards, but he's got the mana. So I thought, okay, one board wipe, I'm going to be in trouble because I don't have a giant death trigger. Now, okay, afterlife, cool, but it's only two. Uh, but the Nightmare Shepherd, if he board wipes, I'm getting a second shot at everything. So... Whether you board wipe me or I board wipe me, somebody's going to get hurt. Now, see, I swung away because he's coming right back. There he is. I think he forfeits right when he sees this. Oh, and then Akai's Wrath. Oh, terrible. Oh, no, he, he goes for it. That's right. He wanted, to, he wanted to play it out. So, he, I mean, look at the volume of draw. Like, this dude ain't playing. Um, he, he's a very slow player. I was real quick reading those cards to see if they play around the, the cage and they do. I was kind of surprised cause I just thought, Oh, it, it blocks like weird degenerate resurrection stuff. It turns out, well, not my deck. Um, <laughs> so he brings out one Kraken, which is not enough. I mean, you wouldn't think this is a swarm deck, but if they have no removal, <laughs> guess what guys, it's a swarm deck. Plague crafter would have double shot him cause I would have resurrected it. Ouch. Oh, that would have been so funny. I wish he would have seen it, but he forfeited first. All right, so it definitely benefited me that that guy did next to nothing that entire game. I mean, it was a complete and utter, like, softball game. But uh, I just wanted to show, you know, how, how he got absolutely screwed late game by the board state. But he got screwed by doing nothing. So uh, so I did get to go first this time. That's amazing. Uh, so obviously, cycling deck, that's fine with me because um, it doesn't really give him card advantage. Takes forever to get going. And the longer the game goes on, the more likely I am to win. Also, these don't tend to be removal heavy. So uh, we got Celebrant. You know, it always feels like it takes a while to get going. But, I mean, this deck can beat Mono Red with the amount of death touches and early game value you get. Because you could block with, you know, an Afterlifer and then block with the token. You start buying yourself time for a board wipe, a life linker, you know, something. Um, eventually it gets to them and you start uh, healing from it too. Now you could sideboard your way out of any of these uh, popular decks. So he gets out another one of those. Um, the amount of removal he has is actually kind of surprising for this deck, but I mean, you can play cycling however you want. I'm surprised he isn't playing red. I mean, I, th I thought it was white red cycling for sure. So we've got the, you know, yeah, he could swing away and have to kill it multiple times, except now. Uh, swing away. Okay. I'm at 19. Let's not panic. Um, now you can tell my opening or not my, my current hand 
Four, 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 and I'm stuck at three. That is just not somewhere you want to be, but spoiler alert, I win this one, duh. Hate that card so much. Uh, then we got Orzov Enforcer. Okay, he's going to come out with the second Chumper, and then we get the uh, guy who brings out one creature over and over and over. Now, recurring creature creation. Very, very annoying to play against with this deck. It's more annoying with, like, uh, what is that? That zombie thing? I forgot the mechanic. It's been so damn much time. But the one where every single turn it's going to bring out a 1-1 zombie or make it one bigger. Uh Hate playing against that because this, this deck has removal, but it doesn't have, you know, one removal per turn. But then again, it kind of does if you count the Death Touchers and Afterlifers and, you know, the fact that you resurrect them. So we got the Moth. That's cool. I do not know why he did that. Do, who does he think he's bluffing with zero cards in hand? This guy's playing like a, an absolute crazy person. So I did think that was pretty funny right there with the Bastion because I'm like, I got to start pinging this guy and healing. I'm on the downside by one life. So he almost swung there. <laughs> I thought, okay, now's a good time to get rid of Mr. 8-8 eight, eight there. I should have swung out. I, I don't know why I'm playing so conservatively with the Moth in play. That was a mistake. Uh, so you can see he's just cycling, cycling, drawing, cycling, cycling, you know. Um, he, he really wants to get out the Leviathans. I've seen people uh, clone that card, I think. Is that a thing? I don't know. They did, Or maybe they just went to fetch multiples. Well, I know Mirror would do it. I don't know. I've, I've just seen some stuff with that where I'm like, okay, I see what that deck does. It, it slowly generates a bunch of 8-8s. Eight I, I don't think it's a thing. So see, there you go. They come back. Oh, wait. did I? Now see, did I lose the token on that? I thought, I thought it doesn't work with tokens. I really should pay attention to my own gameplay. So he swings with that for some reason. I'm looking for a reason why he wouldn't do that. Or why he would do that. I didn't find it. Uh, then we get Mothra again. So you can see my, my Death Toucher is back. And now he can Death Touch stuff in the air. Which that has come up in games. Uh, so this guy, his deck isn't very good. And he's playing like a maniac. And remember, we're in the High Platinum League. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now I could actually, if I had a Death Trigger, just board wipe next turn. But I don't have one. Now that said, these two could resurrect each other. It's just what would be the point. But if I'm out of point removal, I could have gotten rid of him for a second there. So victory number two. It, once again, terrible opponent, but I mean, whatever. I record what I can record and, and I won. So that shows how the deck works, I guess. And my deck barely works, but it wins in the end. All right, so let's play a game that I should have lost and I didn't because this is an example of what this deck does. So we've got a so-so keep. I mean, okay, we've got two lands and a two cost, nothing to go with it, no 1-1 one, one death touchers, and everything is three. So if I get stranded, I'm in trouble. This guy's a slow-playing dick, by the way. Uh, so first draw, scoured. Now remember, I don't have one drop, drop it. Boom, 21-20, love it. Um, don't know what he's playing. Apparently neither does he because he has to think about what to go get. Come on, put away your phone, close Netflix, let's go. There we go. I, I was going to speed this one up, but I need to explain a lot about the board states. So we're running it one to one. It's only it's like three minutes of footage because uh, th this, this deck wins quick. Uh, so Thought Erasure. So we're playing against that kind of deck. Awesome. Love it. So uh, the Demir Surveil recurring uh, discard deck with like Yarok and all that crap and the rats. Very, very, very annoying, powerful, hard to play around deck uh, before Ikoria came out. So it's still good. I, I, I've seen people still play it. It makes sense. Um, so he did get rid of Cruel, which is unfortunate. He knows that's a game winner. Very smart guy. He, he took a bit to read and he's like, I bet with that level of afterlife, Cruel is the card that wins the game absolutely correct but i've got more than that that wins the game so right now we're going to drop in damage and card advantage because he's either going to not get rid of those and i'm going to hit him for four every turn or he's going to chump them and run out of you know creatures and just whatever he did something i undid it it's another turn fine and then i draw another card so the longer the game goes on the better for me or he's going to remove them and i'm going to get cards back because he's he's making me lose cards from my hand by his choice. I mean, let's wait to see next turn. So I either want to do four, 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 you know, five turns and he's dead, or I want some damn cards. And either way, I'm going to get one of the two. So here he comes with the uh, uh, extra card, which I don't love, but then, yeah, one, one death toucher. Cool. So I thought, well, 
If I remove that, I could hit him for four. I could just double down, swing, lose the midnight and get one card. But I thought that's not good enough. I'm going to make him work for it. And I want more than one card out of that because he's cost me more than one card. So think about it. 14 right now to 17. He has nothing in play. The most he can hope for right now is to remove something. And he doesn't because his deck's just annoying. I mean, once you slip in a couple things and he can't deal with it, like a three damage creature for three, that's enough to tip this deck over, believe it or not, as sad as it is. So there goes one card, there goes another. That's great. So he chooses uh, Mothra, obviously, because he cannot afford to let me resurrect this stuff, even though I don't have the mana yet. You'll never guess what I draw. Mothra, bitch. So uh, <laughs> there you go. I was thinking about um, um, the lifelinker because I'm like, oh, that'd be kind of funny, you know. Uh, start, you know, putting him down while putting me up. And then I thought, no, I need an absolute insurance policy because these types of decks tend to run a lot of control. I, I fully expected to see, um, what is that? Uh, the, the ashes or whatever, the forecast that sweeps the board. I can't remember any card names today. Um, but I, he probably had it, but he didn't pull it. So it is what it is. Else plus nightmare. Good card. Okay. You know, destroy something. But the problem is I get a card out of that. And I get two creatures out of that. It's the same damn power. I'm still swinging for two. You got to kill it twice. I mean, there's almost no amount of removal that can deal with this. Now you got to kill everything twice. I mean, <laughs> we in trouble now. He knows, he knows there's just, what is he going to do? Wipe the board? It wouldn't do anything. What is he going to do? Chump block? It wouldn't do anything. He now needs to either wipe the board twice or summon twice as many creatures as me. That's why this deck is so good once it gets going. I mean, I've had even people play something really clever, that one that says uh, exile all even or odd your choice, and then they get exiled instead of dying. I still swung through it. He still only got half my creatures. And you think about it, it's a one, two, three, four deck. Yeah, you're not going to get everything. It's just not going to happen. So this has just the right amount of life gain to, to keep me alive. It's got just enough triggers where the longer the game goes on, the better, which is not typical in today's tier one unless you're playing like Esper Control and you're a dick. It has the early game stopping power and it it has, you know, 40% land. So you're going to get to three and you're going to get to four. And then if you overdraw lands, cool. Feed them into token creation or card draw with the two castles. That's why it's, I'm running eight of them. The deck just works together so well. So well. I mean, the one thing that I really have trouble with is not creatures because this can remove creatures, but... It can't really do anything about problematic enchantments. Like like I said, that one that generates a 1-1 one, one zombie, the, a mass one, every upkeep. Um, Thassa, obviously. Anything indestructible, really. I'm going to do have Plague Crafter, which is either going to keep her on the back row or it's going to kill her. I mean, one way or another, you know, for sacrifice. Um, but her flicker ability, ooh, I mean, that's... But we all know that she needs to get banned. I mean, she's she's so, so, so broken indestructible with a tap ability with an ETB recursion for free. That's, I mean, at least make him pay mana for it. It's, it's ridiculous. And I mean, she's in so many decks right now. It's like, it's clear that she's the problem. So now you might've noticed this can beat just based on speed and based on holding a removal because you see it coming a Gyruda deck. And if they bring out Gyruda, I mean, I, I've had him bring out Gyruda and a Trawler on top of three other creatures, and they're like, oh, I got my combo off. Ooh, I got six mana on turn four and got my combo off, and I'm like, fourth mana, Kaya, bitch, bye. Wipe the board, instant forfeit. Oh, wait, no. Actually, the last time he did that, he timed me out. He was so butthurt that his little net-decked tier one auto winner didn't win. It, it blew his mind. I think he might have actually just sat there in a comatose state and didn't time me out on purpose, or he went crying to his mommy and did time me out on purpose. I mean, the entitlement of these copycat douchebags is amazing. It's like, if you listen closely, you turn your headphones up, you can almost hear them saying... But I was supposed to get 100% free wins with this deck. Reddit told me that. Well, I got news for you, bitch. Aristocrats. Kaya's coming for that ass. Now, as for Winota, um, there's something with the arena algorithm where it just doesn't match this deck up against Winota. Or they're all not in the Platinum League anymore. I'm not sure, but I'm going to probably lean towards the second one on that. The funny thing is, it, it thinks it knows what beats me, but it, it only beats me if I, like, play the cards in the wrong order, get horrifically bad draws, which this deck is very resistant to. 
or if they just, you know, Torbrand turn four blitz me. Like there's almost nothing I can do, especially if I start with like a really three cost heavy deck and no death touchers. I mean, it just, or they get, you know, double knights, double first strike, double two ones. Awfully hard to recover from that much damage or do anything about that for like the first three turns. Bad starts are bad starts. The good news is if you're playing best of three, if you were playing this paper at FNM, you can sideboard in some stuff. I mean, my sideboard, I think I actually built one in this just, you know, on principle. Uh, currently, just without much thought, it's Consecrates Consume, Dire Tactics, Kunaros, and Heliod's Intervention, and it could very well have more 1-1 one -one Death Touchers. I mean, you go up against a fast deck, 1-1 one -one Death Touchers are the breaks. And, I mean, you think they're going to win by, by shocking stuff out of the way? They got to kill everything twice. Good luck. Uh, if they're running a Flood deck, you could run Ritual. I mean, you could put in more Board Wipes. Just whatever you need to give yourself a little bit of an edge, the numbers can go up and down with, with even just the existing cards in this deck to just tweak it enough to make sure you pound them in the second game. I mean, the only real true threat is is honestly like stuff that you can't do anything about like Thassa and uh, just complete shutdown cards like Hushbringer. Hushbringer, you would you might as well just forfeit. That said, it has absolutely no self-defense and you can put point removal in your sideboard, just saying. Hell, they might not even draw it the second game. So if you go with like 10 kill spells, including additional board wipes and stuff, and then they have to summon a four out of 60 the next game, you're going to win the next game. So if you want to kill something for the triggers at will, and also you know it's going to get instantly resurrected, Bone Splinters, or the, the new improved Bone Splinters from Ikoria, uh, I don't remember what it's called, it's really good though. Or I think it's older. It's the one where you can like pay more or sack a creature, whatever that is. And also Bone Splinters is legal. So I mean, if, if you're running up against control, you do not want that main boarded because they blew up enough of your shit, you're probably going to have to sack something you actually need to get rid of their stupid 8-8. But if you just want to drive the game home, generate flyers at will, and get death triggers and ETB triggers because you feel like it, bone splinters, man. It's not instant speed, but it costs one. I mean, you could just do it. Also, like, with the amount of mana, you could run maybe one finale, the black finale. That would be a pretty funny card. It's just multi-kill. It's just fun. I, I like board wipes. Multi-kill is fun, too. So one direction I was going to go with this, just FYI, was all in self-destruct, board wipe, you know, sacrifice, bone splinters, maybe even like witch's oven, but without the cat. Just full-blown crazy shit deck where I just don't care if I kill it, you kill it, whatever. It's just triggers. It's just board wipe. I mean, we're going to put planar binding, let's go. But there was no point removal. There was no death touch early. It was all afterlife, all ETB all triggers, all death triggers. And it did have a little bit more point removal control, but not as much. Most of it was bone splinters, and it just kind of fell flat on its face. So I said, let's do something a little bit more sophisticated, and I ended up with this one, where I had to balance it. You still needed those triggers, but you only needed enough to win, and you only needed enough removal to stop what you can't do anything about. You need it gone, or they're going to win with it. Like a giant, I don't know, lifelinkers, or like a Johnny's pride mate with a heliod sitting in the back. Speaking of that, yeah, this almost always loses the white life gain because that deck's insane. But it wins against the more commonly played decks. So yeah, I'd say absolutely build this on Arena. Um, that's why I put so much time into showing gameplay examples, explaining exactly why I put in what I did, why it's there, how it works, what to play when, that kind of stuff. It's kind of math and decision heavy, but at the same time, you know, how badly could you screw it up if the deck kind of just plays itself? So I would recommend everybody go build this. It's hilarious. You get wins with it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.